Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And today on the MLM call, Colton was going through the new application funnel and he got to the page where the survey is uh, to have somebody be able to apply to join your downline. And there are multiple different ways to be able to put this survey into your ClickFunnels page. Uh, in this case here, Steve was using uh, Wufu to put it in. Colton also showed a way to use Google Forms. And then a third way would be, of course, to build it uh, completely right inside of your ClickFunnels site using the input fields and also possibly the survey field. And I can uh, investigate that further and shoot another video if somebody's interested in that. But today I just wanted to look at how how to do it real quickly using both Wufu and Google Forms. So when you get to your template, you're going to have your page right here. You're going to maybe change out your headline and, and some of the rest of the text. But you're going to have a box here that says custom JavaScript HTML. And right now there is nothing in it. So we need to go into the form creators, build the forms, and then it will give us an embed, uh, embed code that we just pop into this box. So first off, let's start with Wufu. I've never used Wufu before about half an hour ago. I went in, I created an account, and I created a form real quick. So I'll show you guys how easy it is. So again, first off, get in here, create an account. You'll be brought to a page very similar to this. And we're going to click on New Form. And it's going to look just like this. We want to add a, well, actually, we don't, don't want to add a field yet because we want to change this part First, this part here corresponds to this part on Steve's uh, page itself. And we're going to just kind of copy a little bit of Steve's just as an example so you can see how to build this out and how to make it look. So let's just click in here and you'll see it switched from add a field to form settings. And in the form settings, we're just going to put in our form title, which is apply below to join. And then below that in our description, we're going to put in what he has below that on his form to join my downline colon return one, fill out the application below and two. Watch your phone, etc. Okay, you get the idea. So now what we want to do, wait, let me see here. Do we need to change anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so now we're going to add a field. And the very first field we want to add is a name field. So we just click on name, come over, highlight it. So you'll see the dotted line comes around it. You just click on that. And we're going to put in what Steve had over here again. What's your name? Question mark. I'll leave off the other nice to meet you for now. And that is going to be a required field. You can tell it's required because it's got the little red star next to it. So that is it for that field. Next one we're going to put in is email. So we're just going to click the little green plus button. We're going to change this. Well, wait, let's do it this way. Let's actually, let's go back out. That just duplicated it. See, I've only used this once. So <laughs> add a field, email, there we go. And here we got email, email, all right. The only thing we need to change is it needs to be required. Okay, now let's go back to add another field. And now we have a field with a bunch of radio buttons. And so we have a choice here. We have a multiple choice box. So let's do that one. And how did you hear about Steve and his downline? So we'll click, put in our headline. How did you hear about Steve? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. So our first choice is another program. So we'll come down in here, clean that out another program. Next one is through an ad. Third one is, oops, wait, a podcast. 
and we can add another one if we want. And then what you can do is you can pick which one you want checked in advance. So with Steve, he had a podcast already pre-checked, and so that was pre-checked as well. He has that as required, so we'll mark that as required as well. Let's just add one more field real quick. Let's put in a phone number field. Mm, pretty simple. Click on it, make it be required, and then let's see what else we have for fields. We can put in just a single line of text, and then you can change your title to whatever you would like it to be. And then we can also do a different field where we have a paragraph of text. So somebody gives somebody a lot more room to be able to fill in the long questions. And again, you can put in as long of a message as you would like above it. You can also put in a section break. So I'll have a break for the section here. Or let's click out of that, remove the section break if we can. Okay, that didn't work. I just deleted the one above it. So don't put in a section break unless you want it to be stuck there or you're going to want to Google and figure out how to remove it. But as you can see with Steve's forms, he has the long form and then it goes to the next page. And I suspect if we click on page break, that's exactly what it's going to do. It'll say next page and then we can go in and start making our next page. And it appears you do that by grabbing a form. Let's try this here. We'll grab this, drag it down. Boom, there you go. So you just create them up in this area and then you drag them down into the lower area. So I just learned a bunch by doing this uh, and seriously, just start clicking on stuff and I think you'll have no problem figuring it out. Now let's go into our Google Forms. And again, I've never been in Google Forms before, maybe half an hour ago as well. So let's create ourselves a new form. And uh, a couple things we can start with is let's go into uh, customize our theme and we can change the colors and whatnot here. It's pretty limited what you can do. You only got like four different fonts. You got a couple of background colors, but you can choose an image at the top. And what I found is when you choose an image, it actually changes all the rest of the background colors so that it looks really nice together. You got different categories along the side or you can upload a photo or even an album apparently. And let's just scroll down to the bottom because I'd used this one earlier. Let's select that and you'll watch and it'll change as it does. See how the background color changed in order to match the image at the top. So you don't even have to worry about it if you want to just pop an image up at the top. And I don't know exactly how that's going to affect it on the embedding because I haven't even done that yet. So we're going to learn that one together. So let's go into our form title. But before we do that, let's get out of here and let's do one other thing. You can go into your settings and what you can do is you can tell it to collect email addresses. Now you could put an email address form, but I think if they're going to collect the email addresses, why not? Let's just do it that way. You can send somebody a response receipt. You can do a bunch of other stuff. You can show up, show a progress bar. I like that one. And you could actually turn this thing into a quiz and, and do grading on it and all kinds of stuff. So let me just click save and we're going to do the same thing we did here. As before, apply below to join. Now we got our description to join my downline. Fill out the, that's yeah, not right. Location below. Watch your phone. Okay, it's good enough for now. So we're, we got our top section set. We have our email address. Now we're going to go to our first question. And that's going to be, what's your name? And what do we want here? Do we want a short answer? Yeah, that's probably what we want. You can click on that and you get all the different types of answers you can put in there, but we'll leave that as a short answer and we'll say that it is required. Now the next one, we're going to create another question. So we're going to click on add question. And uh, how did you hear about us? 
How'd you hear about Steve? And we have option number one was another program. I know there's a typo there. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, through an ad. And another typo. And let me see, a podcast. And we can continue on. Now with this one here, you cannot go in and click it and have it be the um, you know one that's marked ahead of time. At least I haven't found a way to do that. And again, we can click on that it is required. Now the next thing you can do is you can put in titles and descriptions, images, videos, and you can also put in a section break. So if you click on this, make sure you're highlighting the lowest section on the page or it's going to mess things up and click on add section. And now it's going to create a whole new section for us. We also come back up here to name and let's just put in an add title and description. And I won't even change that. I'll show you what it looks like. You just come up and go to the eyeball and you can preview it. So you can use this little flag if you want, um, anywhere you want along the way. And it will put in a new, uh, just put in a title for you just to kind of separate out some sections. So it actually turns out that it's looking pretty decent It put a nice orange line up at the top that matches the image above. So you can maybe find an image that matches your site and then get some color coordination based on that because it does a pretty pretty nice job of color coordinating. And then we can go down into our new untitled section and let's just leave it called that. But let's just add in one more thing because what would it, what would we do if we had to put in a phone number? Uh, there's really nothing here. I guess a short answer would be what we could look at. Uh, as you saw, there was also uh, the ability to put in, you got your multiple choice like we did up here, check boxes, drop downs. I have no idea what these are yet, but again, you can play around with it, date and time. Apparently you can also put in there. And so we'll just put in phone number and another nice typo. And let's just see what that looks like now. All right, so you got your first section. We'll click on next. All right, it needs something here. And what's your name? And I heard about it through an ad. Now we'll click on next and ask for your phone number, and then we will submit it. Okay, there we go. So now we've just built out our two forms, one in Wufu and one in Google. And let's go back to, I can discharge, guard those changes because I already had one that I had set up here earlier. And it was exactly the same as one I have. And then we have this one as well. So what we want to do now is we want to go back to our form and we're going to click on our custom JavaScript, HTML, we'll open up that box, we'll come back to Wufu, and let's click on share, and let's say we want to embed the form. And let me see, embed, embed with JavaScript, that's exactly what we want. We're going to copy the code, come in, put it here, paste it in, hit save, and preview and cross our fingers because I've never done this before. I hope it works. Fill out my online form. Hey, there we go. Took a, took a few seconds to load up, but um, there we go. It uh, put our form in. Is that what our form looked like? Let's go back because I hadn't filled out as much on that one as I had on the other one. So we'll go back to the forms. And let's just click on it, open it up. And yep, that's what it looked like. Good. So that one worked. Now let's go and put in our Google form and you just come over and click on send. You want to click on this to embed it in HTML. Well, let's just click on copy down here. That's the way you're supposed to do it. So we clicked on copy. We'll come back in here, custom JavaScript. We'll take out the other form because you probably wouldn't want to have them both in there. 
paste this in. Now, one thing in in uh, Colton's example earlier, we clearly had an issue with the width. So let's put this down to only 300 for right now, just to see um, what we're going to do. And we're, we got a little work to do in here as well. But let's just check this out. Okay, so now it's way too skinny, but it does have a scroll bar on the right hand side which as we widen that out, that will help. So let's go back in and actually let's do this. Let's, let's go back here. What I want to do is I want to right click and inspect the width of that element. And when we get here, let me see. Okay, let's go here get here we see that it is 419 pixels wide so let's go back into the code let's just make this let's just make it 420 and at first it wasn't working right because you probably noticed I typed in 4200 instead of 420 and so it didn't work at all but now uh, obviously we have it working but let's do a few more things to clean it up. I mean, it actually looks pretty good. It's well centered in here. You got a scroll bar and, but let's, let's do a couple more things. Let's go in and see what happens if we take out the height, because we don't set a height parameter. It should give us full height without having that scroll bar. So let's test that. Hmm. No, actually, it actually made it worse because it, it shortened it up. So let's do, instead of that, let's put in more of a height to get rid of the scroll bar. Now, you, you could just leave the scroll bar if you want, or you can go in and find out the greatest height of all the pages and then put that in. So let's just put this up to 1,000, and hopefully I won't make it 10,000 this time. Okay, and there you go. Now we don't have the scroll bar at all anymore, and that's a good good height. Now let's, uh, you don't have to, but what I wanna do, because actually we're pretty well centered right inside of this box at our 420, uh, but if you want to, we can get rid of the background, or in fact, let's, instead of get rid of the background, let's, uh, let's change it to dark color first and see how that looks. So you go up to columns, you come down, this is the, this is, let's uh, scroll back up here. We have one, one row right here. We have a second row here. Actually, we have a first row up here, second row here, third row here, and this is the second column in that third row. So we go columns, first row, second row, third row, and you can see it, it barely puts a little blue line around there, you can see that. So we'll go to our second column, go to our background color, and let's just put that as a dark color and save it and see what that looks like. Okay, that doesn't look bad. We could maybe put a little, little bit of padding at the top, a little margin at the top there, bring it down just uh, maybe, let's see here, let's just inspect this. We could probably bring it down just 10 pixels. And so we scroll up to where it says EL custom JS. It says margin top. Let's just put this up, let's see. How does 10 look? Actually, that looks like it's too much. Let's go with five. Okay, that's good. We'll go back in, custom JavaScript. Just put this up to five and we'll leave that for now. Now, if you wanted to completely get rid of that, uh, the color and everything behind it, you would come into your background you would just take your slider, no matter what it was set on, if it was still on the white or the black, and just pull it all the way to the left. And that'll make it zero opacity. If you take it all the way to the right, it makes it an opacity of one. And so you can get rid of it by going all the way to the left. But if you do that, you also want to go into advanced because I just know that there is a drop shadow around it as well. And so you could just take out the drop shadow if you want. So let's just save it one last time. 
go in and take a look. So this is how you can put in a Wufu form. This is how you can put in a Google form in order to survey or more accurately to take the application on anyone who wants to get into your MLM. And like I said, if anyone is interested, I can go through um, a little program and show you how to set up something very similar to this just using all native functionality built right into ClickFunnels. And then, of course, you have to either take the information out of your ClickFunnels account or out of Wufoo or out of Google. And then, as Steven shows, you want to put that into a, um, a Google Sheet and then display that sheet on your screen just as social proof of all the people that are signing up for your account. But that's it for today. If you need any more, uh, any more training, if you got any questions, just feel free to get a hold of me. Have a great day.